the story goes, there's a book, I must tell you the story, I may have told it when I was here last time, there's a book by a guy called Mark Singleton mm. called um, Yoga Body. And he's done a lot of research on the origins of modern yoga postures. And as a result of his research, I won't go into it all because that's also 15 minutes, I don't want to do too much talking. I keep saying that, which is actually prolonging the talking. Um, but um, he, he, he's from his research um, that there was a big, there was a where the modern yoga postures actually come from. Most of them that come from Iyengar, BKS Iyengar, that most people have heard of, um, around about the 1920s, 1930s, there was a big interest in um, gymnastics in Scandinavia and Germany and Great Britain. Suddenly, after the First World War, people were coming out of it, and there was all these people doing all this amazing stuff. Some of them went to India, and they opened gymnasiums in India. And at the same time, the British, who actually grabbed India, um, as one does, um, were saying well, the excuse to justify them actually invading India and taking all the good stuff. It's, well, look at the Indians, they're no good, they're, they're weak, they have a poor diet, They've got spindly legs. They can't run this country for themselves. So we need to be here to make it more industrious. That was the excuse. So the young Indian men really took exception to this criticism. So they started joining the gymnasiums. And um, apparently, the guy that was Krishna, the guy that was um, Iyengar's teacher, and Desi Kachars, these two big yoga teachers, you may or may not have heard of them, um, bringing it over to the West, um, main teacher who was called Krishnamacharya, actually had a, his yoga asala in the same street as one of the gymnasiums. Mm -hmm. right? That came from Denmark, probably. <laughs> because the Danish were very big in this. I'm not being patronising now, it's true. And uh, um, so the Danish were... So therefore, basically, what's happened is that a lot of the modern yoga practice has come from Denmark, possibly a bit Sweden, Germany, wherever, Great Britain, gone to India, been repackaged and then come back 70 or 80 years later. The difference is that the Eastern way of thinking has been impregnated into these exercises. So instead of now doing exercises, it's perhaps, uh, you know, but it's, 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 it's very, very interesting. Um, but the whole thing about the mind has got lost, basically. And you don't need to do exercises to change your mind, to adjust your mind. It's something you can actually do if you pay attention to it which is another practice. You don't have to get a sticky mat and be in a group of people to adjust your mind, even though you can meditate. You can do that right now. Just let the mind settle. And you can do it on a train, you can do it in a shop, you can do it in relationship. When the relationship starts to get carried away <laughs> with itself talking, talking, everything, you know that in 10 minutes it's going to go downhill because there's too much excitement. So without being manipulative, one can just say, okay, I'm going to take responsibility for this and I'm just going to calm everything down very gradually. No one's even going to notice. So you drop your mind a little bit and suddenly the tone changes and suddenly the other person or the other people are suddenly are being not reactive, they're becoming more responsive. So it changes. So this is the part of yoga that I really, really, really am interested in. How we are. How actually are we? And there's a whole big movement that came out of, um, well, ever since Freud, basically, and probably before Freud, but that came out of America. You know, that, uh, that how are we? How is one? How are we? What's the quality of the silence between us? So I find that all very interesting. But we are here to move. Um, and it's a long way to come, I was saying yesterday, to come from England to teach a few exercises. You can do a few exercises in your garden if you want to, you know, whatever you want to do. You don't need me. But I've developed a way of working um, that does incorporate the mind because it's very meditative. We were doing it yesterday. Um, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now is quite recent. I've been a yoga teacher for nearly 40 years and um, I've been an osteopath for 30 years. So a lot of bodies have gone through my hands and through my groups over the years. 
Um, and whereas many, many years ago, up until not too long ago actually, back bends, shoulder stands, da 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 da, working out the best way of doing it. Um, Trikonasana, Trikonasana, 20 years doing it one way, and then 20 <laughs> years doing it another way. The same, exactly the same movement, the same neurological pathway. You know. Um, and people like Feldenkrais say that when you start to move, um, when you open up a new pathway of movement, so supposing I've never made that movement in my life, everything I've done has been there, or there, or up there, that's a completely new movement to me. Just over there. I'm not a dancer, but just that movement. Now if I repeat that movement enough, and get into the rhythm of that movement enough, it opens up another part of the brain. The part of the brain is already there, but it's just a bit sleepy. So in opening up another part of the brain, you're opening up another part of yourself. So there is the possibility that that may change your behaviour, even if it's to give you more energy. But it needs to be pleasurable, because the body doesn't really like unpleasantness. And there's so much unpleasantness in class in groups. You know, I mean, with the best intention sometimes. Come on, you know. Uh, Oh, I've seen people hit people. Mm -hmm. I've seen people hit. I've seen people have been so open. Years ago, this was somebody come up, smack them on the chest because they didn't have the arm in the right position. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 fascism. It's it's terrible stuff. So anyway, I'm going in the opposite direction. So what I wanted to say was that um, after all these years of doing all these postures, just the movement for me, like that. It's so pleasant. If you're feeling, if you're feeling, if you're feeling resentful, if you're feeling angry without any particular justification, I'm so angry, I don't know why I'm so angry, try that for five minutes <laughs> and see what happens to your anger with the knees bent and letting go of the pelvis. So it's the quality of movement that's important. Just want to add one more thing to do with what we're doing. Um, I've been calling myself a yoga teacher for 40 years and I, I'm always going to be called a yoga teacher by other people but now I'm a, I'd, be, I'd rather be known as, as far as the body is concerned, I'm a yoga teacher as far as the mind is concerned but as far as the body concerned, is concerned, I'm not a yoga teacher, I'm a teacher of creative movement mm -hmm. which is supported by sound osteopathic principles or chiropractic principles if you like very similar principles about gravity and how the different parts of the body relate to each other, the curves of the spine, the position of the pelvis, etc, etc, etc. And also the fluid content of the body is very important and becoming more interesting. So, there was um, just one more thing to add to that. Everybody knows about osteopathy and that's one of my fields. Um, and there's certain laws that you have. I mean, it's so cerebral, it's crazy. Um, uh, but I won't go into that now, it may come up over the weekend. Um, but there's something called classical osteopathy, which make up about 2 or 3% of the osteopathic profession. You don't go in with a back pain and say, oh, this is my back problem, can you sort it out? It's become lost, there's very few people doing it. They don't deal, they don't treat the back problem. They start working with the whole body, and they start working with the whole person, and the, the, the it, and it's to do with health. It's not only to do with back problems. And the way they work, a lot of their work, they, they the pioneer, who's he, he was working, he was treating people at 95, a man called John Wernham, and he was brilliant, and he came right from um, Martin Littlejohn and, uh, and um, Andrew Taylor Still, who were the the forerunners, the front runners in the late 1800s. I could talk too long, and you can see that. Um, and um, he used to talk about rhythm, routine, and rotation. And he used to take people, and he would do more than this, but all he would do, he would undo them. And he said, the thing is, he said, it's not very dramatic. There's nothing spectacular about it. It's quite light touch. He said, but the important thing is that you just keep going. You keep going. And then when you think you shouldn't be going anymore, you keep going a little bit more until you start to feel the change. You feel the change in the tissues. 
You feel the change in the person. You feel the change in the atmosphere in the room. Just two people in the room, you and the, and the client. Um, and this is what I really feel is very nice because I don't think anybody should be under stress. I don't think anybody should be doing positions that they can't do. So what we're going to do for these two days, um, we had yesterday, but what we're going to do for these next two days, we're going to continue and we're going to just work rhythmically and calmly. Sometimes we're going to open it up a little bit more and sometimes we're going to close it down a little bit more in a variety of positions. And I'll talk a little bit more as we go through. So that's it. And we'll let the mind kind of take care of itself. So we've got, we've got some pegs up here, like at school, you know, um, with your names on when you went to first school and you were five years old, you hang your mind up there, okay? But be careful when you leave, <laughs> you get the right one. So sometimes I used to go home with the wrong coat. Because if you get a different mind, you know, better the devil you know than the devil you don't. <laughs> so make sure you pick up the right mind. <laughs> so, um, can you be warm enough um, and can you lay on your backs on the bolster like we did yesterday? Um,